What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp and InScape video for you. So in today's video, I just wanted to dive a little bit deeper into the assets that have been added inside of the InScape uh, library, and just kind of take a look at what's available, what you can do with them, that kind of thing. Um, I will link to a video I just made about the new version of InScape, version 2.5, but I wanted to kind of dive deeper into this. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what I wanted to do was just get a little bit more in detail detail about the uh, about the asset library that's been updated as a part of Inkscape 2.5. Um, they kind of took that online and started adding some models in there. I just kind of wanted to take a look at what was available. So to start off, this example model that I'm using is the Casa Moderna by Luis. So you can look that up and uh, you can spell that L-U-I-S. Um, when you search for Casa Moderna. So you can download this and follow along from the 3D warehouse if you want to. And so to start off, if we were to run InScape right now, like if I was to hit the play button and take a look at the models that are getting rendered, um, just out of the 3D warehouse, you're gonna see that they're not very they're not very realistic looking. And so like for example, if I fly in here and I look at these trees, like the palm trees actually aren't too bad, but like this tree itself, it's just got a whole bunch of triangles in it. And uh, the trees don't necessarily look super good, especially as you get up close to them. You know, same kind of thing. I mean, the, the stuff that's in here isn't terrible, but it can be a lot better. And that's where InScape's library kind of gets important because you can use that to replace all of these with much more realistic type uh, plants and other things like that. So let's take a look at what's in there. So to start off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna delete out a bunch of these plants that are currently contained inside a SketchUp. So you can see how these are kind of making my model run slow. They've got a lot of polygons in them. They're not really what I want. So I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna delete a bunch of these out. And what I wanna do is I wanna look at the library of plants and other things that are available inside of InScape that we can use to make this look a little bit more realistic. So I'm just gonna get these plants right here real quick. I think I missed one or two. Nope, nope, we're good. And so what I wanna do is I wanna start replacing these with the InScape plants. And so in order to do that, we're gonna start off and we're just gonna click on the asset library. And depending on your internet connection speed, this may take a second or two longer to load than it did before, just cause this app, I believe it's now accessing all of these online, which I think is a good thing cause I think they can add things in the background. But what I wanna look at um, in particular is you can sort these by type or by tag. So right now, for example, I'm really interested in vegetation because we're outside. So we can just click on vegetation and that's just gonna sort this so that it only shows the vegetation models contained inside of InScape. So as you scroll through, one thing I want you to pay attention to is some of these models are coming from Evermotion. And so Evermotion is an online website where you can download high quality 3D models. And so this is something that InScape must have partnered up with these guys that I'm really excited excited to see because usually if you see something like this, if you see, uh, if you see, for example, the models coming from somewhere like Evermotion, um, usually those sites, because the, because the models are for sale, they usually have a pretty good process for going through and looking at these in order to make sure that they're high quality models. But I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a couple of these. And what you're gonna notice, and what I really like about this, is these all come in as InScape proxies. So when these come in as InScape proxies, what that means is these are all proxy geometry that's gonna get replaced when you load InScape. So like for example, and we'll just throw a few more over here. I've probably got a few too many, um, but that's the nice thing about InScape is making these changes is really easy. Um, once we bring those in and we click the play button and we run InScape, so when InScape loads up, you'll notice that even though those are in as proxy geometry um, inside of SketchUp, so if you look at them in SketchUp, they're in as proxy geometry, but over here, they actually get brought in as full geometry inside your render. And when you zoom in on them, you're gonna notice that the leaves are really detailed and the trees themselves are really detailed as well. And I'm probably gonna make a video in the future about using something like Scatter in order to bring them in a little more randomly. Like you can see how these are uh, just a little little bit 
um, they're, they're just a little bit uniform right now in this rendering, but the quality that they bring in is great. And so one thing I might do, I don't even remember if I have this extension still, but I had a scale and rotate multiple extension that would just randomly rotate and scale things. Let's see if I still have it. I don't have it right now, but you could take these proxies and you could kind of rotate them a little bit and scale them in order to make them look a little more realistic. You could do different things like that, but you can see how making that change is really easy. And one of the things you're going to notice inside of Inkscape is when you make that change um, to the proxies, that's going to be reflected in these plants as well. So I'm super happy with these trees. Let's take a look at some of the other things. Like for example, let's add a couple bushes in here. So if you remember, we kind of replaced out the SketchUp bushes. Well, if you go in here and look at the vegetation inside the asset library and I want to note this is loading pretty fast even on my really slow internet connection if you take a look at this you can actually sort by different tags so things like bushes for example if I go through and I look at these bushes you can see how there's multiple different bushes that you can add in here again really easily and one thing that's going to be really powerful is if you're able to um, incorporate these with the extension scatter. What that would allow you to do is that would allow you to place these a little bit more randomly to make them look kind of organic. But I'm just going to go in and place a bunch of these. And then now if I take a look at those in Inkscape, again, if I zoom in really close, those still look really good. Um, I would say they don't necessarily look quite as good as the... Uh, as the models that we got from Evermotion, but overall they look really good. And again, it's just really nice to have those things in order to be able to drop them in. So there's also a few different things in here. Like they've added some hedges, but then if you scroll down, there's also some things like rocks and stones that you could drop in. So. You could drop a few rocks in here, things like that. So I really like the direction they're going with what's in this library. Obviously they have a ways to go before they can compete with some other programs um, that have been building libraries for years, but I am really excited to see what you can do with this because it's so easy to make those live changes. So you can see how there's some exterior models available. You can also, they also have a library of interior models available. And I'm going to try to do split screen on this one. Oddly enough, there's actually some furniture in here that's white that looks like proxies, and it's not actually proxies. Um, and I want to highlight real quick just the way that these are updating in real time inside of Inkscape. I really like that feature as well. Um, but we're going to go in, and instead of searching for vegetation, what we're going to look for now is we're going to look for furniture. And so furniture, we've got a lot of different furniture options in here, though I'm sure there are more to come, but things like indoor, outdoor couches, tables, chairs. Um, I would like to see this one fleshed out a little bit more. I don't think there were a lot added in here, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna place a couple of these in here real quick and just see how this is gonna look. So from what I can see, it doesn't look like there's really any ever motion assets for the interior yet, but even these render out really nice. And I may speed this up while I add a couple items in here. So there's also a number of different people models that you can place in here. So, um, and those, I'm a little back and forth on those. Sometimes I like having those in my models, sometimes I don't. I will note that uh, th these do look pretty good. Um, and a lot of people have different opinions about the different kinds of styles and things that they want. Um, so that guy kind of feels like a giant to me, but maybe that's just the uh, size of the couch. Um, but you can see how you can resize all of these when you bring them in. Um, so depending on the kind of model you want to create, I mean, I do feel like this fits really well with this image that we're creating. So there are a number of different people models that you can bring in as well. But one thing I just want to focus on, again, is just how... Um, 
how these proxies come in inside of uh, SketchUp and are really slowing down my model. But then if I zoom in to say like these plants or something like that, you can see how I'm getting a really realistic um, shadow from the plants and everything else, which is dynamic. And it uh, looks really good without sacrificing performance. And then the last thing I want to look at one more time, and we talked about this one in my update video that I did yesterday, but I want to look at the car library because there's a number of different cars that came in, most of them from Evermotion again. And uh, what I really like is the way that those incorporate the new uh, car paint material that was added. So if I go down to vehicles, this is going to sort this so that I can see all the vehicles that I have included. And um, I think most, if not all of these are Evermotion models, but when you bring them in, what immediately kind of stands out, at least to me, is the way that the uh, sunlight reflects off of the materials. So if I look at this car, for example, um, the sunlight is reflecting off of that new car paint material and I think it looks really good. So I really like the cars that they've added in here. Um, they seem to be really high quality models. I really like the way that they kind of render out. So if I was to add like a pickup or something like that and then take a look at how that looks inside of Enscape and you can see how it's loading down here in the corner. But you can see how again this car really renders really nice and especially if you zoom out just a little bit um, you can see how it does kind of a preview load in here with the material until it actually calculates the rays coming off of them but I really like the way these look as well so I really like where these asset libraries are going I, I've always talked about how I'm a big fan of these because I don't really want to spend a lot of time modeling plants and things like that if I'm trying to show a building or something like that so I think uh, this is still kind of in its beginning stages but I'm really excited to see where this goes I think this is a great update um, to the asset library that we had before and I'm really excited to see uh, what this can do in the future but leave a comment below let me know what you think how do you feel about this how do you like the models that are in there I just love having that conversation with you guys if you like this video please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week as always thank you so much for taking the time to watch this I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video thanks guys